So today we're going to talk about Euclid's algorithm. Um, so give me two numbers, Brady. Two three-digit numbers, let's say. Three-digit numbers. Yeah. 484. 484. 781. 781. So we're going to find the greatest common divisor of these two numbers. Um, so that's going to be the largest number that divides both 484 and 781. Oh, I didn't give you a prime, did I? I don't know yet. We'll find out. Um, okay. 484 is definitely not prime um, because 484 is 22 squared. Um, so we could actually already find out the greatest common divisor that way, but I'm going to show you this algorithm. And this algorithm I was actually taught probably about 10 years ago um, by Vicky Neal, who has been on your podcast, the late, great Vicky Neal. So it's very fun for me to be able to share this today. So the largest factor of both 484 and 781. So we're going to start with 781 because it's the bigger. And that equals 1 times 484 with a remainder of, and now I'm going to have to do this math in my head, I've got 7 here, 9 there, and 2. That's yes. just one subtract the other, is it? Yeah, exactly. So this is the first step of our algorithm. What we do for the next step is we're going to take this number and move it all the way to here. So we'll take 484 and put it here. And then we take 297, put it here. And how many times does 297 go into 484? Well, that's also once, but this time it's with a remainder of 187. Okay, so now we repeat, 297 goes here, 187 goes here, and again, this is one, and that's a remainder, this one's easy, 110, and we keep going and hope we don't run out of paper. Plus 77, 110 equals one times 77 plus 33. 77 equals two times 33. Oh, last. Plus 11. Okay, 33 then equals three times 11 with no remainder, so we stop here. That's the stop point when you've got no remainder. The stop point when we've got no remainder. And I've got to thank you now, Brady, for picking a number that takes the length of the paper. <laughs> Couldn't have done it better. Is it, is it not normally you wouldn't have expected it to take that long? I have done some that take longer. I have done some that are done in two steps. Um, it can really depend. Um, and I can't reiterate more. We did not prepare this. Okay. So this tells us this last remainder term is our greatest common divisor. The 11. The 11. Obviously, in maths, often we want to know, is that actually true? I can tell you it's true all I like, um, but is it really? And we can, we can test this. How do we know 11 is the greatest common divisor? Well, there are two things we want to know. We want to know that it is a divisor, and we want to know that any divisor of 484 and 781 is at most 11. So there's not one greater. So to tell it's a divisor is actually kind of OK, because we see from this bottom line, 11 is a divisor of 11. 1 times 11 is 11. 11 divides 11. And this bottom line, tells us that 11 divides 33. Obviously, we did already know that, but if we, if we didn't and had more complicated numbers, this bottom line can tell us that. So we've got 11 divides 33, which means that 11 divides all of this side of the equation. So it's got to divide this side of the equation as well. So 11 divides 77. OK, 11 divides 33 and 77, so it divides all of this side of the equation. So it has to divide all of that side of the equation. And we can keep going up which tells us that then 11 divides, well, from here, all of this side of the equation, so it's got to divide 484. It divides all of this side of the equation, so it's got to divide 781. So 11 does divide 484 and 781. We know it is a common divisor, and that's a check in that box. OK, so is it the greatest common divisor? Well, um, let's have a look. The greatest common divisor is going to divide 781 and 484. So any number that divides 781 and 484 has to divide 297. Because if it divides this and this, it's going to have to divide this for this equation to work. And then we can go down. It divides this and this, so it has to divide this, this, this. So going all the way down, any divisor of 484 and 781 has to divide 11. So 11 has to be the greatest one. So 11 is the greatest common divisor. And we can do this 
more generally as well, we can do this with any two numbers. And now I am going to get a second bit of paper. Can I just say, yeah. I'm really impressed by the numbers I chose. Yeah, I am really, they were great numbers. To get um, something that A, has a few steps that look nice, yeah. um, and ends in not one. Because if you've got co-prime numbers, it'll end in one, which looks great, but looks kind of like maybe they all end in one. But no, these are actually really helpful numbers. I know, I had no idea what was coming either. Yeah. I'm really pleased with myself. I, I am very, yeah. very happy with that yeah. one as well. Yeah. So now there's another trick with this, and we can use it to go backwards. So, if we now start at the bottom, we can rearrange this equation to make 11 equals, okay, well, it's gonna be 77 minus two times 33. So you've rearranged. So I've equation. rearranged this equation. Yeah. So I wanna change the 33 now. So I'm gonna rearrange this equation. So I'll keep the 77 as it is, but rather than having minus two times 33, I'm gonna have minus, and then in brackets, well, 33 is 110 minus 77. So I've just replaced here the 33 by what we find from this equation by rearranging. And then we can collect like terms. So this becomes three times 77 minus two times 110. And if you were to work that out, you would find that three times 77 is 231 and two times 110 is 220. So this does work out as 11. Great. Now we're gonna replace the 77 using the next equation up. So here 77 is 187 minus 110. So three times 187 minus 110 minus two times 110. Okay, so three times 110 here, add two times 110. So this is minus five times 110. And we're gonna keep going. And this will probably now be sped up because it's gonna be a whole bunch of repeated calculations. And then final step, we're going to replace the 297. So this becomes 8 times 484 minus 13 times 781, take 484, which is 21 times 484 minus 13 times 781. Okay, so we have now reversed Euclid's algorithm and we've got our greatest common divisor as the sum of two multiples of our two original numbers. Right. And we can always do this. So if the greatest common divisor of, say we've got A and B as our numbers, and let's say their greatest common divisor, which we often write as brackets, I'm gonna call this D. Using this algorithm, we can always find U and V integers such that UA plus VB equals D. Now notice I deliberately said integers, they can be negative, as we've got here, but for any A and B, we can always find U and V such that the sum of UA plus VB is their greatest common divisor. And this is called Bayesian's lemma. Now, there's one final fun thing I want to tell you about Euclid's algorithm, uh, because we were saying how great uh, Brady was at picking numbers. What are the worst numbers that Brady could have chosen in terms of taking time to write down. Okay. So... Because if I'd chosen prime numbers... If you'd chosen prime numbers, we would have got to one, because they would have been co-prime, uh, but we could have got there fairly quickly, 101 and 103, for example. Well, the first step would have been that 103 is one times 101 plus two, and then we'd get 101 is 50 times two plus one, and then you get two is two times one. So that actually ends really quickly. Okay, but you're asking what would have gone long? What could have gone long? And the answer is consecutive Fibonacci numbers. I would not have guessed that. So what that essentially means if you have Fibonacci numbers is every one of these steps is one times something plus something. So here's a small example for Fibonacci numbers. Uh, let's say we've got 55 and 34. And you'll already notice I'm writing the numbers smaller because I know this is going to take a while. So we've got 55 is going to be 1 times 34 plus, well, actually, by nature, we're going to get 
the next Fibonacci number, right? So it's going to be 21. And 34 is 1 times 21 plus, well, what's the next smallest Fibonacci number? 13. 21 is 1 times 13 plus 8. 13 is 1 times 8 plus 5. 8 is 1 times 5 plus 3. 5 is 1 times 3 plus 2. 3 is 1 times 2 plus 1. And then 2 is finally 2 times 1. And you told me if you ever get a 1 as your remainder... Yep, they're that, co-prime. That's co-prime. And you'll see, because of all these 1s, this took as many steps as you can. Yeah. So I took a lot with mine. You took a fair amount. We took a while to get to 2s and 3s yeah, here. Yeah, it was this 2 that... Mm. So this was nearly as inefficient as it could be, but it could have been worse if they were Fibonacci numbers. Um, and the historical reason why this is interesting is that in finding this, um, it was said it was the first foray into complexity theory. So the first time that anyone considered how long could an algorithm take, what's the maximum complexity. Um, and it has also been described as the first practical use of Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci numbers have been discovered way before anyone started to apply it in this situation, uh, but no one had found anything they were useful for until this algorithm. If you like number five videos, you're gonna love some of the mathematical content here on Brilliant. It's clever, it's fun, beautifully designed, and it's also super interactive. You can personalize everything, just get it how you want it, how you want to learn. There's no doubt the people who know all this stuff, who excel at problem solving, have a huge advantage in life and in the professional world. So why not up your game and check out Brilliant today? Learn for free on Brilliant for 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash number file. You can also scan the QR code there on the screen and I'll pop links down below. That link is also going to get our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription. A huge thanks to Brilliant for supporting this episode. Four thousand five hundred and sixty. So these are some values of superfactorials. Now I also just want to pause. Side note: the superfactorial notation, I think, is boring. We have like exclamation marks factorials, and we've just got the letter SF. So I want to propose a few changes. Now some people do write it as a dollar sign, so they'll write five dollar sign. 